بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الساعة أيان مرساها فيما أنت من ذكراها إلى ربك منتهاها صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he sat right beside the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a few questions. What is Islam? What is Iman? What is Ihsan? And after asking these three questions and getting the answer for these questions, this man asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَأَخْبِرْنِي عَنِ Inform me about the final hour. As in, when is it going to take place? So the Prophet ﷺ replied, The one who has been questioned regarding this is no more knowledgeable, is no better informed than the questioner himself. Just as much as you know about this matter, I know. We are both equal in this matter. We both know the same. And in the Quran Kareem, it is mentioned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yasalunaka Anisati Ayana Mursaha. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would be asked, When is the final hour? Qul innama ilmuha rabbi. Say to them that its knowledge is with my Lord. La yujaliha li waqatiha illahu. And nobody will reveal it, nobody will make it occur, nobody will reveal it on its time apart from him, apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will be a burden, it will be very heavy on the heavens and the, uh, uh, and the earth. La ta'tikum illa and the final hour will not come upon you, but suddenly. They ask you as if you are knowledgeable about this, as if you have knowledge regarding this. Say to them that it's Knowledge is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but many people do not know. In another place, in Surah Al-Nazi'at, in the 30th Sipara, the same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that they ask you regarding the final hour, when will it occur? Fima anta min dhikraha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, that, O oh Muhammad, what position are you to reveal it? What position are you to mention it? And there are two possible meanings to this. One is that you have no knowledge about this. Tell them. How am I meant to tell you if I have no knowledge? And the second possible meaning of this is mentioned in the books of Tafsir. That the Prophet wasallam he would continually get asked this question. The kuffar, the disbelievers, they would actually mock the Prophet ﷺ. You know when the Prophet ﷺ would call them towards Islam, he would invite them. And he would urge them to accept Islam. And he would tell them of the consequences that they would suffer if they do not accept Islam. So when the Prophet ﷺ would give the belief, they would mockingly say, when is it? Bring it right now. You know, you keep telling us about this final hour. When is it going to be? Tell us that first. So when the Prophet ﷺ kept getting asked these questions, he repeatedly and kept on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that inform me. And then this ayat came down that what position are you to mention it? You do not need to know this. You are only a warner to those who fear it. That's all your job is. 
So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we learned from this, he had no knowledge of when the final hour would take place and is going to take place. Number two, the angel that is in charge of blowing the trumpet. It is mentioned in the riwayats that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heaven and the earth, he created the trumpet. Israfil, And then he handed the trumpet over to Israfil or he gave Israfil, Hazrat Israfil, this job that you will blow into this trumpet. So from that moment, فَهُوَ وَاضِعُهُ عَلَىٰ فِيهِ he, Hazrat Israfil placed this trumpet on his mouth. شَاخِصٌ إِلَى الْأَرْشِ بِبَصَرِهِ And his gaze is fixed towards the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is fixed. His gaze is fixed. And he is awaiting that when will I be commanded? As soon as I am commanded, I will blow into the trumpet. In um, Imam Hakim, rahmatullahi, he narrates that since Hazrat Israfil was handed this job, he has not blinked. Because why? Because of the fear that if I blink, I am going to miss the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, any moment now he may give me this job. He may tell me to blow the trumpet. And then in another narration of uh, Imam Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi has narrated it. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kayfa annam? How can I relax? How can I live a luxurious life? Waqadil taqama sahibul qadnil qadn. When that angel who is in charge of the trumpet has taken the trumpet by his mouth. He has placed it by his mouth. And he is leaning his forehead forward. So he has the trumpet in his mouth and his forehead is forward. Meaning he is like, when you see this action, he is ready to blow the trumpet. And he is listening very attentively. He is awaiting when he will be commanded to blow and he will blow straight away. So how can I live a luxurious life knowing that Hazrat Israfil is ready to blow at any moment? So when the Sahaba Kiram, they heard this and they heard the Prophet Wasallam saying this, this was the beauty of the Sahaba Kiram that they suddenly became worried of the Day of Judgment as well. They were worried. Are we ready for the Day of Judgment? Are we ready to present our deeds in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Today we will sit in many bayan, we will learn about the Day of Judgment, but we will go straight back home and we will live the same life. It will not have a ounce of an effect on us. Our hearts are rock solid. Nothing penetrates our hearts. It will go into one ear, go out the other. Rather, it is meant to enter our hearts. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we listen to such speeches, listen to such narrations, we should be fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the sahaba kiram heard this, they were worried. So the Prophet wasallam received information about this. The narrator mentions this, that the Prophet ﷺ perceived that we were worried about this. And in some narrations, the Prophet ﷺ was actually told that what should we say? What should we do? So the Prophet ﷺ said, read, Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil. Tawakkalna ala Allahi rabbina. And in some places, ala Allahi tawakkalna. Tawakkalna ala Allahi rabbina, ala Allahi tawakkalna. So Hasbunallah wa Ni'mal Wakil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for us and He is the best of protectors. We place our trust in our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when a person from this narration we learn, the Sahaba Kiram were instructed this. So for us, we should also continuously and uh, try to read this frequently. Hasbunallah wa Ni'mal Wakil. When we hear such narrations that are fearful 
Quran, it is mentioned that whoever reads this frequently on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save that person from the fear of the final hour. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him from the horrific scenes on that day. There will be people that will be fearful, they will be frightened. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him on that day. So we should continuously and frequently read this dua. Hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel. So two things we learn from this. The Prophet ﷺ did not have any knowledge regarding when the final hour would take place. And number two, neither did Hazrat Israfil The one who is going to blow the trum trumpet because of which this whole destruction will take place and the whole um, structure of the earth and the heavens is going to change. So if these two people do not know, then who does? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran Kareem many times, and like we just read the ayat, but there is more sarih and clear ayats regarding this ilayhi raddu il musa'a. And in one place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah indahu il musa'a. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is the one who possesses the knowledge of the final hour. So, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So we do not know when it will take place. But one thing we do know <clears throat> after studying the narrations is that they, what day the final hour will take place. And it is mentioned in the narration, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that in the yawm al-jum'a sayyidu al-ayyam wa'adhamuha indallah that the day of Friday literally translated, is the leader of all days. It is the greatest of all the days in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهُوَ أَعْذَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْعَدَحَا وَيَوْمِ الْفِطْرِ It is even greater in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the day of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. وَفِيهِ خَمْسُ خِلَافِ It has Five distinguishing, five distinguishing characteristics. Number one, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ آدَم Number one, on the day of Friday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam. Number two, وَأَحْبَدَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ آدَم That Adam alayhi salam was sent down to the earth on the day of Friday. وَفِيهِ تَوَفَّ اللَّهُ آدَم it is on the day of Friday that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave death to Adam alayhi salam. And it is mentioned in other narrations that this was the day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also accepted his repentance. So three things here. The number four, فِيهِ سَاعَةٌ لَا يَسْأَلُ الْعَبْدُ فِيهَا شَيْءٍ إِلَّا أَعْطَاهُ مَا لَمْ يَسْأَلْ حَرَامًا That on the day of Friday there is a time there is an hour in which if a person, a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he does not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of anything, of anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him his wish on the day of Friday. As long as he does not ask for anything that is unlawful. He asks in this time frame on the day of Friday, Allah will grant it him. That is number four. And number five, وَفِيهِ تَقُومُ On the day of Friday, the final hour will occur. مَا مِنْ مَلَكٍ مُقَرَّبٍ وَلَا سَمَاءٍ وَلَا أَرْضٍ وَلَا رِيَاهٍ وَلَا جَبَلٍ وَلَا بَحْرٍ إِلَّا هُوَ مُشْفِقٌ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ أو كَمَا قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ That there are no angels who are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Neither the sky, neither the heaven, neither the winds, neither the seas. None of these things, except all of these things, are fearful of the day of Friday. And in another narration, it is mentioned that وَفِيهِ تَقُومُ السَّاءَ مَا عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنْ دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا وَهِيَ تُصْبِهُ يَوْمَ الْجُمُعَةِ مُصِيخَةً حَتَّى تَتْلُعَ الشَّمْسُ شَفَقًا مِنَ السَّاءَةِ إِلَّا بْنَ عَدَمْ That on the day of Friday, the final hour will occur and there is no 
creation on the surface of the earth except from that they are listening out on the day of Friday from until the sun rises except from the children of Adam alayhi salam. and in another narration it is mentioned, mentioned apart from the human and the jinns everybody else is listening out on the day of Friday that maybe today is the day when the trumpet will be blown and they are all fearful of this day and in another narration it is mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ, again, he mentioned how great the day of Friday is, that it is the best of days, how it is, you know, it has a relation with Adam salam, and then he says something. He says, his sabqa, or naf, his sabqa, that it is on this day, the day of Friday, that the trumpet will be blown, the final hour will take place, and on it there will be sabqa, which we will be mentioned later. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, فَأَكْثِرُوا عَلَيَّ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ And then, read upon me, send upon me frequently on the day of Friday, durood and salah. فَإِنَّ صَلَاتَكُمْ مَعْرُوضَةٌ عَلَيَّ Because your durood and your salam, your salutations and your blessings, your durood are presented before me. قَالُوا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَكَيْفَ تُعْرَدُ سَلَاتُنَا عَلَيْكَ And the Sahaba Ikram, when they heard this, they asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how is it possible that our durood, our salam, when we say, وَسَلَّ اللَّهُ مِي when we say, وَسَلَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ How is it possible that our durood and salam will be presented to you after you have died, after your body has decomposed, after you have turned into pieces? After you have rotted away, you'll be nothing but bones. So how will our durood and salam be presented before you? How will you receive it? So the Prophet wasallam said that إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ حَرَّمَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ أَنْ تَأْكُلَ أَجْسَادَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden upon the earth as in the creatures of the earth that they eat the bodies of the prophets. Meaning the Prophet's bodies are just like, are, are safe and they are untouched just as they were when they were buried. Just as they were when they were alive. Bil Fuzz, if we were to imagine that if we were to dig a, any Prophet's grave, our Prophet Sallallahu grave, and we were to look inside, we would find him in the exact same state that he was buried. No creature can touch his body. So one thing we learn from this is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi says, Re, re, uh, send durood free, uh, upon me frequently on the day of Friday. And the Prophet ﷺ receives our salam. He receives our durood. In one place, the Prophet ﷺ says that Man salla in the qabri samituhu. That whoever sends durood and salam upon me by my grave, whoever is fortunate enough to come to Medina Munawwara and he is directly in front of me, in front of my grave. And he sends durood and salam upon me, Samit to who I hear him directly. I hear his durood and salam. You are in front, you say, As-salatu was salam alayka ya Rasulullah. The Prophet ﷺ is hearing. And then the Prophet ﷺ says that whoever of you sends durood and salam from a far distance, then it is still conveyed upon me through the angels. The angels, wherever you are, we say right now, وَسَلَّ اللَّهُ me Right now, an angel is taking this durood and salam and he is presenting it and conveying it to the Prophet He receives it. And then in another narration, it is mentioned that uh, in Abu Dawood Sharif, that Allah, no Muslim sends salam upon me except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returns my soul to me so that I may reply to them. So the Prophet receives our salam, he hears our salam, and number two, he replies to our salam. Subhanallah. And number two, Frequently, the Prophet ﷺ, we should do this on a uh, daily routine, but the Prophet ﷺ has mentioned that send durood upon me on the day of Friday. Frequently. 
So we should send as many durood upon our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on this day. And it is mentioned in one place, al qawl al-Badi. The narration, you know, the scholars have discussed regarding its strength. You know, some have mentioned that it is extremely weak. However, nobody has classed it as a fabricated hadith. Therefore, it is correct to mention it. Therefore, it is correct to attribute it to the Prophet ﷺ. And therefore, it is correct to act upon it. And what is this narration? The Prophet ﷺ says that whoever sends 1,000 duruds upon me every day, every day, and then in one narration, it is mentioned every Friday. Whoever sends durood upon me every day or every Friday, that person will not die until he sees his abode in Jannah. We have mentioned before that when a person is about to depart this world and we see that his eyes are just gazed towards the heavens, he is breathing his final breaths. So he is gazing towards the heavens. What is he seeing? He is seeing scenes from the afterlife. He is seeing the angels. He is seeing this Jannah. So if you send a thousand duruds every day, every Friday, you will not die until at the time of your death you will see your abode in Jannah. And when you see your abode in Jannah, after death where are you going to go? Into Jannah. Prophet is saying, send 1,000 durood upon me every day, you'll go to Jannah. SubhanAllah. So we need to send durood upon our Prophet frequently. And from this, the day of Friday, the, mainly on the day of Friday, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he would tell his student Zayd ibn Wahb that whenever the day of Friday comes, Send durood upon the Prophet and try to send a thousand durood upon the Prophet. So this should be our target. Every day we should target a minimum of 300. Minimum of 300. And then on the day of Friday we should increase this and we should target 1000. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grants us the ability to remember our Prophet on a daily routine, especially on Friday. We only have one hope, we only have one Sahara, and that is the Prophet Apart from this, in this narration that we mentioned, there is a mention of an hour. And the Prophet said that there is no slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who he does not ask of anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him that thing. As long as he does not ask of anything that is unlawful. So when is this hour of acceptance? So the first thing we learn is the Prophet sallallahu he kept it vague. He said, it's on the day of Friday, there is an hour on the day of Friday. So we learn from this that the day of Friday, just like it is specific with Durood, it is also a day, day for making dua. Throughout the full day of Friday, we should make lots of dua. This is the wisdom behind why the Prophet ﷺ kept this vague, that keep making dua. But however, we want to know when is this hour. So there are two common opinions. Number one, it is when the Imam sits on the member. Until the salah does not finish. Until the salah finishes. So when the imam sits on the member and he delivers his khutbah, from the moment he sits on his member until the salah is not finished, that is the time of acceptance. That is when your duas will get accepted. However, this is a, a very important note. This does not mean that when the imam is on, on the member, he is delivering his khutbah, we should be making dua. That is not correct. It is wajib that we listen to the khutbah when the imam is delivering his sermon. We should listen to the khutbah attentively. And uh, along with this, you know, in the second khutbah, the imam makes a dua. This is possibly what it is referring to. At the end of the dua, we make dua for the ummah. We make dua, Rabbana atina fi dunya. You know, Allahumma hafid ikhwanana 
في كل بلاد المسلمين that protect our brothers in all the uh, countries so there are different duas that the imam makes at the end of the sermon and you'll see here in our masjid as well that lots of people at that time they are saying ameen very loudly so again this is incorrect a few months ago we got the, i received this question and i wrote the answer to this and it was uploaded on the facebook as well that it is incorrect to raise your hands and to say ameen loudly rather in your heart you should say ameen so it is not a time to make dua rather the dua that the imam makes rather the dua that we do in our salah when we are in namaz we also make dua between the two sitting we say rabbil fili at the end of the prayer we after durood we make a dua some of us read rabbi jalni some of us read rabbana atina some of, some of us read allahumma inni zalamtu nafsi zulman kathira so they are the duas that is opinion number one an opinion number two when is this hour of acceptance it is that it is at the latter stages of the day of friday the latter stages of the day of friday and this is actually mentioned in a hadith from hadrat jabir ibn abdullah radiyallahu anhu he says that the friday has that he says the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the friday has 12 hours and in those 12 hours there is an hour in which a muslim servant of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of anything except his wish is granted and then he mentioned that search for this hour after asr in the last stages of the day and this coincides with the time when our father adam alayhi salam was born when was adam alayhi salam born it is mentioned in muslim sharif or yeah muslim sharif that adam alayhi salam was created after asr on the day of juma from the last creations from the last few moments on the day of juma so right before sunset on the day of friday this is the time where if you make a dua it is said that your dua will be accepted and this is uh, the more preferred opinion compared to the first one so we should value this time every friday before the maghrib prayer after asr set yourself a time where you can make dua 10 minutes we all have a need we all need to ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something we need to ask for a house we need to ask for a car we are in some sort of depression we have some sort of worry we are looking for a partner you know somebody is not well every individual has a different need so where and who should we ask from from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when is the time to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his prophet is telling us that whatever you ask at this time I will grant it you so we should value this time most of us before we were unaware of this time that is why we were heedless we were ghafil we were unaware that time would go as wasted but now we know consider it very valuable and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hour so the conclusion of today is that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam does not know when the final hour will occur neither does the angel of hazrat israfil only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses this knowledge but number four what we know what day the final hour will take place on and it is the day of friday may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our gathering inshallah we will continue from here next week wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam